EFF Secretary General Marshal Zlamini and CCT member of Vuyani Pambo were involved in a scuffle outside the EFF party's headquarters. A group of men wanted to be part of the EFF briefing. All right, let's get SABC News political editor Mzondi Mbeche in on this. What happened? Yeah, well, I, I, I hope uh, very soon they'll be able to, to, to play that clip where you had um, a scuffle. Uh, let's let's the, watch it first yes, perhaps okay. and then get some analysis on that. All right, so now that we've got the visuals of what took place, just give us some more insight into that. I think, uh, Nzinga, this is a culmination uh, of what has been happening since the EFF 10th celebration on Saturday. Uh, you'd recall that one of the takeaways from that was when the celebration had concluded, and then, of course, they were concluding uh, that chant, um, kill the poor, kill the farmer. So when uh, Malema and the, the leadership of EFF then chanted that, so it kind of like evoked, uh, I think, emotions from across the board, from a number of uh, people. Uh, you'd recall that uh, at some point uh, it had, uh, the court had ruled against it, but they appealed. And then, of course, uh, <clears throat> in the context of the struggle, it was said, no, well, you can still appeal it, but uh, it's not necessarily a song which uh, actively says we must go and kill people. But it landed uh, so differently to uh, the across uh, uh, different sectors of society. In fact, one of the good examples is um, a South African who is now an American, uh, one of the most uh, uh, not powerful, perhaps, Richest person, right Elon Musk, word, yeah. uh, the, 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 the person who now owns Twitter. So where he basically says, um, so they in South Africa, they are um, calling for the, I mean, the killing of white people. So it evoked a number of emotions. This story was not only uh, confined here. So given what is happening here, you can see that some people may have taken it literally. And then we saw the DA immediately after the, the EFF rally saying they are going to take this matter to the international body. So that tells you, Nzinga, that um, there are people um, who feel uh, this is a call uh, towards <laughs> war and then they wanted perhaps to hear from him, uh, Malem, what exactly is he saying. But obviously that was a press conference meant for the media. So if you go in that fashion, so it does then evoke uh, those uh, memories. You'd recall when the World Trade Center was happening. So you had um, uh, those, I think they were led by Terry Blanche, those yeah. uh, uh, people who just budged in there. So it, it, it reminds you of all of that. I mean, it, it, it is something that I think South Africans uh, will watch very closely because uh, it is evoking emotions. But the most important thing about it, what exactly is it? Uh, what, what is happening uh, as a country? I think we need to take a step back as a country and see, is it an overreaction or people are justified in what they are doing? Mm. There are, it appears that there are many more tensions between different parts of society, rightly or wrongly. Some people are also taking advantage of this to stoke divisions, because I think our problems in South Africa are many and varied, race and inequality being one, our economy being another. But there's almost like there is a stoking of tensions at times, rightly and wrongly. 
time and again, um, you'd recall, there would always be an incident which will evoke uh, either national outrage or mm. national reaction. Mm. Uh, we have seen, um, I think in the past few years, where even people on the beaches were, would make those racial uh, comments and stuff like that. So, but I think uh, this says, um, just take it out of the EFF alone, and perhaps that, that group of, I think, um, uh, Africaners, uh, if I'm correct, who went there. It says there's something that our country is going through at the moment. You can see the head, maybe from both angles. Uh, our country is, is, is crying for something that can heal those kinds of divisions. So what is it that the leadership will do? Because at some point, something must be done. In fact, uh, in the next few days, the deputy president of the country will be holding what you call a national dialogue. Because as a country, we need to understand each other. Where are we? What do we want? Do we understand when we're talking about the nation? What exactly is it? In fact, this moment will be a great reflection for those people who will be meeting uh, in Stellenbosch uh, from Friday and Saturday. The president will address that. It's convened by the deputy president, Paul Mashatil. Mm. There is a sense, though, that there are so many parts in South Africa and there's a disparate understanding of what a nation is, uh, what we are as South Africans and what we are as Africans. And until those things align, we are going to continue having clashes along mostly racial lines, uh, never mind gender and also uh, other identity issues. It's not something that's been fixed in the last uh, in the last years of democracy since 1994. It's an issue that almost gets worse when inequality in our economy worsens as well. More than a dialogue needed in South Africa. Absolutely, more than a dialogue needed. But also, we do need to understand where we come from, uh, who we are, and then why, when we understand all those factors about ourselves as a country, and then what are the urgent tasks? that need to be undertaken. We've been speaking about the issue of poverty widening. So at what point are we going to be able to arrest it? What is it that we are doing wrong that makes poverty keep widening? Um, so those are the kinds of uh, things that uh, the country will have to grapple with. And then incidents like this are actually, what do they call it, are the tip of the iceberg. So mm -hmm. we must realize that we may have a bigger problem that the leadership of the country from across must deal with. SABC News political editor Zondele Mbecha just giving us insight into the scuffle outside the EFF headquarters, but more importantly, the state of South Africa and our people.